Welcome to the Business at the Speed of Sell podcast, where you learn how to accelerate the growth of your online and offline businesses, profits, and personal income. Tune in daily to get the tips, tricks, and tactics that have generated over $100 million in online and offline sales. Now, here's your host, Anthony Flack. This is Anthony Platt, and you're listening to Business at the Speed of Sell podcast. Today, I want to talk about competition stalking. And, you know, stalking is probably not a great word to use, but it's a uh, shocking word. It really kind of drives home some importance in the the word itself, or at, at least it grabs your attention, if nothing else. But when I'm talking about competition stalking, you know, I'm really talking about how do we find out what the competition is doing? And most specifically, who are they talking to and who are they selling to? And there's a couple of things that I do in my uh, everyday business that helps me know where my competitors are. One of them is, you know, LinkedIn is the business network that's, you know, everybody's out there. And I've had a LinkedIn profile for I don't even know how long, but forever. I don't really use LinkedIn a lot. I probably should use it more. But I use LinkedIn for one very specific thing. In my LinkedIn configuration, I have it set up so that nobody can see who my connections are. But I go out all the time And I connect to my competitors, their salespeople, their office people, their management people. And I would say seven out of 10 times, maybe even eight out of 10 times, they connect back with me. And when they connect back with me, I go in and look to see who their connections are. And I would say 70, 80 percent of the time they have their connections to where anybody can see them. So then I go and I connect to their connections. And it's amazing how many of my customers that I'm talking to, I find out that they're also talking to because they've got a connection in LinkedIn. It would make sense that if they've connected via LinkedIn, they somehow know each other. So I go and connect to all of the people that they connect to. And then I start to reach out via email to those same people. Now, if I don't have an email address for that customer, it's easy enough to try to figure one out. I just go to other email addresses that I have for other people at those companies, figure out what their template is for how they do their email. Is it first initial, last name? Is it first initial, last name, first five characters of the last name? Is it first name, last initial? Is it first name, underscore, last name? Just figure out what they're using for their template and then send them an email using that same template. Now, you might have to try a couple different configurations. If it's Andrew Jones, you might end up having to try Andrew Jones and then Andy Jones as well. I would send one, see if it goes through. If it bounces, then send the other one. Takes a little investigation, but it's really not that hard to be able to then send an email directly to them. And if they know a lot of the people that you know, that's a great icebreaker for you to be able to go in and say, hey, saw you on LinkedIn, saw that, you know, you know, Bob Williams, Bob Williams and I went to college together. I'm in this business. I know you're in that business. Let me know if I can ever help you at any time. If there's anything you need, shoot me an email. Just uh, thanks, you know, whatever. So you can send them an intro email and it's easy enough to get those folks to start responding to you. And if nothing else, now you have them in your contact list and you can start sending them emails and offers and calling them and all that good fun stuff. And if you know that they're in the market, I would strongly suggest that you most immediately, you know, find out what their temperature is. If they're connected to one of your competitors, you know, you need to find out right away, you know, are they in the process of buying? Have they already bought? Is it in the budget this year? Is it something they're budgeting for next year? Is the budget cycle right now? Can you get in for next year's budget cycle? Really utilize those. Don't just go out and make connections and then don't do anything with them. You need to reach out You need to kind of be aggressive at connecting with them because that's the whole reason that that you did this in the first place. Another thing that you can do very similarly is you can follow them on Facebook, you know, find their Facebook page. Now, my personal Facebook page is really not a lot of about business. I try to keep my business off my Facebook page, although I do. You know, my business is my life and my life is my business. So I tend to commingle those. But I've been really trying to be specific and have product pages and business pages for my business and products. And my personal page is really just my friends, my family, a lot of wrestling people. 
and I try not to use that for business, but I do go out with my business accounts and go and find my competitors using Facebook. And then I do the same thing, right? I friend them on Facebook. They friend me back. Then I can go and look at who their friends are. Then I can go friend all their friends. And then a lot of times you can get information off of either the LinkedIn info or off of the Facebook info and be able to figure that out from that perspective as well. Another way you can stock your competition is you can find out where they're running ads and you can run ads in the same places that they're running ads. If you Google it, there's a number of software packages out there. Similar web is one of them. And you basically go and put your competitor's website into similar web and it goes out and finds where they're running ads. And there's a lot of data that you can glean from where they're running ads. And then look at the history of those ads. If they have some ads that they've been running for a very long time at one particular website or another, then you probably want to go and create a very similar ad to what they have and go and advertise on that same site. If you have two offers, if you have one offer today, it's got to be getting all of the traffic for that particular offer. If you have two offers that look very similar, you may be able to just split their traffic. So they may be actually driving people to that ad. And just by you running an ad there that's similar to theirs, don't copy their ad word for word and look exactly like them. Look similar, model what they're doing, don't copy. You'll be able to hopefully pull off part of their advertising and drive those customers back to you. There's a lot of that that you can do as well. And you can talk to their customers and, you know, as you find them on LinkedIn or Facebook and find out how they know the competition. I mean, there's ways that you can be creative in your discussions with the customer and find out what kind of relationship they have with your competition. But you can find other places that they hang out. Maybe they all go to the same forum. Maybe they're all hanging out at the same users group or forums. So there's ways to find your competition out there. Another thing that you can do is you can use Skype and you can see if your competition is using Skype. Now, there's not as, as much that you can do with Skype as far as stocking other than you can use Skype to open a dialogue with your competition. I go to trade shows all the time and I go around talking to my competition all the time. And a lot of my competition are people that I've worked with in the industry, you know, over the years. And so I go booth to booth and talk to, you know, a lot of them, my colleagues, my friends, people I've known for many years, but some of them are not. And I just go and talk to them. And it's amazing the kind of funny looks you get from people in their booth when they see basically their competitors coming by and, and he's chit chatting. Right. And he's, uh, you know, and I don't go in and go, oh, who are you selling to or what are you selling and how's traffic? And, you know, you obviously be respectful and don't talk to them about what they're doing. Then you don't want them coming to your booth or to your office and asking you how you're running your business. But you can go and learn a lot about what they're doing just by having a simple conversation with them and seeing what they're talking about. And you can ask them, you know, a few, you know, leading questions that that will help you just generally be friendly and interested in people. It's amazing how much people want to talk about themselves. You don't really have to give them much of an opening to get them to start going on and on and on about themselves and their business and what's going on and how successful they're being. And then next thing you know, they're giving you, you know, lots of good intelligence on, you know, what your competitors are doing or what they think the industry is doing or the direction that they're going in versus the direction you're going in. And it's amazing how much you can learn just by going in and having a conversation with your competitors. So I'd encourage you go to LinkedIn and try to friend your competition and see if you can't see their customers and see if you can't go ahead and connect to them and I would be interested to see if you would send me a post back and let me know how it works because it works great for me. And I've been doing it for many years. And when I tell people this, even today, people are amazed that I do this. And I've been doing this for, I, I don't even know, five or six years now. But go and try it. And I'd be interested to hear how it works for you. If you have a question for Anthony, then head over to www.anthonyflat.com and leave him a voicemail message for a chance to have your question featured on the show. Thanks for listening to the Business at the Speed of Cell podcast at www.businessatthespeedofcell.com.